the shaking and the gospel. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to give you a layout of where we're going, and then we're going to go where we're going. Amen? Amen? Amen. First of all, let us pray. We're praying. Father in heaven, thank you very much for giving us this opportunity to come here and worship you. Father, we invite the presence of the effective teacher of the word, and that is the presence of the Holy Spirit. The highest influence that you've given to us and deserving sinners to teach us the deep things of God. Therefore, Lord, even as we look at the shaking and the gospel, we invite him to come and imprint the things of God on our hearts so that we may be transformed from within out. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, first of all, we we'll look at the first shaking that took place in the Bible. We're going to explore the events and the happenings around the first shaking that happened. Then we'll go and look at the final shaking that God is going to do as we live in the end times. Then we explore around the events that surround the final shaking. Then we look at the cause of the shaking, explore again. Then we look at some quotations. Some people are talking. There should only be one person talking, and that's me. We look at quotations from Ellen White concerning the shaking. Then we'll break it down. Then we're going to extol and exalt our Savior throughout the shaking. And let's see how that comes up to the gospel. Are we ready? Okay, so let's go to the Bible. Let's go to the Bible. We're reading Exodus chapter 19. We'll read verse 12. Exodus chapter 19, verse 12. Ab, you'd be ready. You're going to read 12 to 19. We're looking at the first shaking that happened in the Bible. Exodus chapter 12. Ab, you can stand and read verse 12 to 19. Exodus chapter 19, sorry. Verse 12 to 19. And you shall set limits for the people all around. And you shall set limits for the people all around. Saying, saying, take care. Take heed. Do not go up into the mountain or touch the edge of it. Do not go up into the mountain or touch the edge of it. Why? That's the question. Go on. Whoever touches the mountain shall be put to death. Whosoever touches the mountain shall be put to what? Why is God exacting at this point in time in the Bible? Go on. No hand shall touch him. No hand shall touch him. He shall be stoned or shot. Or he shall be stoned or shot. Whether beast or man. Whether the beast or man. He shall not live. He shall not leave. When the trumpet sounds, a long blast. So there's a trumpet that is going to happen. Go ahead. They shall come up to the mountain. Mm -hmm. Continue. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people mm -hmm. and consecrated the people. And they washed their garments. Mm -hmm. And he said to the people, be ready for the third day. Do not go near a woman. On the, on the morning of the third day, mm -hmm. there were thunders and lightnings. So there were thunders and lightnings. And a thick cloud on the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast. And then there was a loud trumpet blast. blast. Continue. So that all the people in the camp trembled. All the people in the camp did what? Trembled. That's verse what? Continue. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God. Mm -hmm. And they took their stand at the foot of the mountain. Mm -hmm. Now Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord had descended on it in fire. Who had come down at Mount Sinai? Who had come down at Mount Sinai? It was the Lord himself. So there was a preparation that was supposed to be done. And then there was a trumpet that was supposed to sound. Are we together? And that trumpet, if you look at it from the Hebrew, it's the shofar. Remember you guys, B.O.T.? Shofar? The twisted horn of an animal, which is a symbol of our twisted iniquities crying out to God. Are we together? So they cry out. There's a cry out that goes out before the people come and meet God. Continue reading. The smoke of it 
went up by the smoke of a cube. Mm -hmm. And the whole mountain trembled greatly. And the whole mountain did what? Trembled greatly before the presence of God. Remember, we're talking about what? The shaking and the gospel. What is happening at Mount Sinai? Continue. It's 19. And as the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, what happened? Moses spoke. Moses spoke. And God answered him in thunder. And God answered him in thunder. Somebody say amen. amen. So this is an experience where God is about to come down and tabernacle with his people. There is a covenant that God is about to make with his people. But before the covenant is made, God has to set limits around where he is going to dwell. When there's a trumpet, there's a crying out from the people. Are we together? There's a crying out from the people that is symbolized by the blowing of the trumpet. I wish I could go on more. We'll do the shofar at some time later. So this is what we get from the Bible. That God is visiting his people and as he comes, he's about to do something. We are in Exodus chapter what? We're in Exodus chapter what? 19. The next chapter is what? 20. And what is in 20? The Ten Commandments. There is a revelation of God himself to the people. Are we together? Are we together? I do well with feedback. Those of you that are listening to me for the first time. If you don't respond, I'll keep on repeating until you respond. Are we together? Amen. Amen. So let's read Exodus chapter 19. Harriet. Exodus chapter 20, sorry. We're going to read verse 18 to 20. Verse 18. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightning. Pause. Remember, you need to chew. And all the people did what? So the thunderings. So the thunderings and the lightnings, and then what? The noise of the trumpet. And then there was noise of the trumpet, the crying out of man towards God. Are we together? Continue. And the mountain smoking. And the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and to hear, but let not God speak with us, lest we die. Lest we die. So there's a presence of God that comes in. God has given the Ten Commandments, and the people tremble when they see the lightning and the revelation of the character of God. Are we together? And what do they say? What do they say to Moses, according to the verse? Speak thou, speak thou with God. For us, so they're crying out for a what? A mediator between man and God. Are we together? Because God has revealed his true character. The demands of his law. His infinite character has been revealed. And Moses, and Moses said unto the people, uh -huh. Lord, for God is come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. That ye sin not. So there is a revelation of God's character. The Ten Commandments are given. Then the people begin to tremble and say, we, we don't want God to speak to us. We want somebody else to speak on our behalf. They are crying out for a substitute, for a mediator to stand in between them and God. Somebody say amen. Amen. If we're clear, say amen. Amen. So go on, let's read, my friend. You can stand and read. We'll read 24, verse 17. Exodus 24, verse 17. We are exploring around the events of the first shaking when God came and revealed himself to the people. Exodus 24, verse 17. You can read. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a roaring fire mm -hmm. on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. In the eyes of the children of Israel. So the sight of the glory of God was like what kind of a fire? What is the divining fire? A consuming fire, an eating fire. Are we together? Are we together? So God is a consuming fire. Nothing that comes near leaves. No man sees God and lives. That is what the scripture says, right? Are we together? 
So this is the picture that we are getting and the events that are happening around the first shaking when God came and revealed his character. Somebody to read Isaiah from you guys. Isaiah chapter 6. Now notice what is happening in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 3 to 5. I hope you're taking note of the verses. Remember this is the same one Bible study. Amen. 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 Okay. So Isaiah chapter 6. Abud you can read verse 3 to 5. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 3 to 5. The Bible says. And one spoke to another and said. Mm -hmm. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. When you see a reputation. Or uh, something is being mentioned thrice. It's divine altogether. Holy, holy, holy. It is a revelation of the divine altogether. So there's God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Are we together? Continue. And the whole earth is full of His glory. And the whole earth is full of His glory. What happens? And the foundations of the thresholds shook. And the foundations of the poles in the temple in heaven did what? Shook. Are we together, young people? We're talking about the what? The shaking and the gospel. So there is the foundation as God is revealed, as his character is revealed to his people, what happens? There is a shaking not only on earth, but there is also a shaking where? In heaven. There is a temple in heaven. And that temple is being shaken by the revelation of the glory of God. Continue. Shook at the voice of him who called, uh -huh. and the house was filled with his name. So there is a voice, there is a declaration that God is making in the temple, and the temple begins to do what? To shake in heaven. Are you seeing the picture? Mm -hmm. This what? This five. This five, read. And I say it. Woe is me. Woe is me. For I am lost. For I am undone. I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips. I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen. My eyes have seen who? I've seen the king. The Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. I've seen him who is the captain of salvation. He's been revealed unto me. Amen. This is the prophet of God, Isaiah, who has been preaching all along. But this time around, he sees the king and what happens to him? He says, I am undone. I am a man of unclean lips. The revelation of the character of God brings us to ourselves. There is a revelation of who we are when God is revealed. That we cannot even approach him. Some of you think God is your sugar daddy. That you can play around and around him, right? That you can actually mess around him, right? But here is a man. Let's go to another man. You read Daniel. Let's go to Daniel chapter chapter 10, verse 8. Chapter 10, verse 8. Sorry, I always forget your name. Spirit. You can read Daniel chapter 10, verse 8. Let's look at Daniel, right? Well, from looking at Isaiah, he sees the revelation of God and he says, What is me? I am undone. I am lost. I have seen the king with mine eyes. Daniel chapter 10, verse 8. You can read. Therefore, I was left alone. I was left alone. And saw this great vision. And saw a great vision. And there remained no strength in me. No strength in me. For my calmness was turned in me into corruption. My calmness was turned in me into what? Corruption. Daniel is a prophet of God. Daniel is the man that receives. How many of us are like Daniel in here? The diligence of following God. But Daniel, when he stands in the presence of the Palem, who is Jesus Christ himself, the Pamoni, the wonderful numberer, he stands and sees him, his calmliness, his whole goodness is turned into what? Corruption. Corruption. In the presence of the king. Read on. And I retained no strength. And I retained no strength in the presence of the king. 
The human being trembles when there is a shaking. They see who they are and then they cry out. They cry out to God because they know they cannot stand before the king of the universe. Are we together? Are we together? If your friend is dozing, wake them up. I also want to doze. Okay, so Isaiah has told us that when he saw the king, they were shaking in the temple, and then he saw himself or he was. Right? That's the first shaking that we're seeing in the Bible. So let's go to another shaking in the Bible. As we come near to our times, let's read the book of Hebrews. Let's read the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. Let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Quickly. Hebrews chapter 12. Who is reading? Harriet. Hebrews chapter 12. We are going to read uh, verse 16 to 28. I'll be stopping you as we go so that we explain some few things. Verse 16. Let there be any fornicator or profane person mm -hmm. as he shall. Who for one mortal of meat saw this favorite. Uh -huh. For ye know, no, for ye know how that afterwards, when he was having inherited the blessing, mm -hmm. he was rejected. Just pause there. So Paul, we're catching up with the conversation that Paul is having in the book of Hebrews chapter 12. He is admonishing the believers. He says, lest there be any fornicator. And then he goes on to bring in a character named who? Esau, right? What happened to Esau? He sold his inheritance for meat. Are you with me? He sold his inheritance, the given inheritance. Do you work hard to receive an inheritance? What do you have to do to receive an inheritance? Huh? What do you have to do to receive an inheritance? All you have to do is be born in that family, right? Are you with me? So this guy was the rightful guy to receive the inheritance, but he esteemed it lightly. The birthright that was given to him, he esteemed it rightly. Lightly, sorry. So he perceived it. Actually, the Bible says he despised it. He despised the birthright that was given to him. So, after he despised it, and he knew that he would not receive it because his brother <laughs> tricked him. He was a trickster. Are you with me? Jacob was a trickster and tricked him and received the blessing. What happened to Esau? He is crying out, seeking for it in repentance, but he receives it not. There's a time which is coming that during the shaking, there's a crying out among us, God's people. But there are those who do not participate in the crying out, the agonizing, the confessing, and all this, and why sees all these things. They do not participate. They esteem it lightly. They despise it. And what happens to them? There's a time when they will seek to repent, but they will not. Because the wake in the temple, which has been shaken in heaven, there is no man because the glory of God has filled the temple and no man can walk in. Intercession has ceased. Are you with me, young people? Let's continue. When he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Carefully with tears. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched in that brain with fire, uh -huh. and unto blackness and darkness and mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. Just pause there. He is taking us backward to the first shaking. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. To the first shaking when God revealed himself by the revelation of the law. And the people said, no, we don't want anyone to speak to us. We want you to speak on our behalf. Are you with me? He's saying, you have not come to that mountain which could not be touched. He is expanding the first shaking. Are you with me? Listen carefully, young people. Because if you miss this, if you miss this, you might just miss out an element that you need 
to set your life in order. Read on. Verse 20, for they could not endure that which they commanded, and did so much as the beast touched the mountain, mm -hmm. to have stoned or struck through with the dirt. Mm -hmm. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. I exceedingly, even Moses, even Moses, at the revelation of God's character, the infinite character revealed in his law, he says, I exceedingly quake and tremble. This is Moses, the man that would talk to God face to face. There's a standard that God is lifting. I'm, I'm saying these words deliberately <laughs> because they're somewhere well going. There's a standard God has lifted but even Moses says, I, I, I quake, I tremble. Continue reading. But she has come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God. Unto the city of the living God. Now he shifts our, our concentration or our, our, our image from the earthly arrangement to something up there. Are you with me? Continue reading. Mm -hmm. Into an innumerable company of angels. Of angels. To the general assembly in the church of the firstborn, mm -hmm. which are written in heaven. Which are written in heaven. Believe me, you, this is temple language. Written in heaven, temple language. Are you with me? Continue. And to God, the judge of all. And the the judge of all. <laughs> you guys are not getting it. The judge of all. God is the judge of all. There's about to be a judgment, the final judgment. Okay, continue. And to the spirit of just men made perfect. Continue. And to Jesus the mediator. Jesus the what? The mediator. The man that was demanded by the people. But he's the mediator of what kind of a covenant? Read on. New of a new covenant. And to the blood of sprinkling. And to the blood of sprinkling. That speaketh, that speaketh how much, what kind of thing? Oh, there's a sermon coming, it's called the blood of sprinkling. It speaks, it speaks better things. Than that of who? Abel. Are you with me? The blood of Jesus speaks. And when it speaks, it speaks better things. It is sprinkled upon the people, upon the temple, and when something is sprinkled, what happens to you? You startle, right? There's a shuddering among us God's people when the blood is sprinkled. Are you with me? Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. See that ye refuse not him that does what? Speaks. Now, in the other verse, what speaks? The blood speaks. Are you with me? Now, in this verse, it says, See that he refuse him not that speaks. Refuse not the blood that speaks better things. Somebody say amen. Continue. For if they escape not who refuse him that speaks unto earth, much more shall not be escaped. If from him that speaketh from, from heaven. He is the bread from heaven that comes down and speaks. Are you with me? He is the bread of heaven. Continue reading. Whose voice then shook the earth? Whose voice then? Remember when he spoke and revealed the Ten Commandments, there was a shaking, right? Are you with me? There was a shaking. His voice shook the earth. But this time around, what is he going to shake? He had promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. But also the heavens. Are you with me? The blood of Jesus transcends, even touching the heavens. He shakes even the heavens. There's a quake even in heaven. Remember, the prophet sees, what does Isaiah see? He sees the Lord and what happens? There's a quake because the glory of God has been revealed. Continue reading. And this word yet once more, mm -hmm. besides the removing of those things that are shaken, that are shaken, as of things that are made, mm -hmm. that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. May remain. Read 28 and 29. Wherefore, which is living in kingdoms, which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and holy fear. For God is what? 
For our God is a consuming fire. So there will be a shaking in the church. Are you with me? Are you with me? There will be a shaking in the church. But the shaking, let's go on, let's go on. Let's read the verses. Let's read the verses so that we put, I'm, I'm deliberately reading verses so that when I start speaking, you start seeing the connections. Are you with me? Are you with me? Okay, pay attention. Let's read another verse. Let's go to the book of Haggai. Haggai chapter 2. Haggai chapter 2. We're tying all these things together. Haggai chapter 2, we're going to read verse 6 and 7. And I want Harriet to go to Joel chapter 3, verse... Joel chapter 3, verse 16. Let's start with Haggai chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. During the time of Jesus, there was a shaking. Are you with me? During the time of Jesus, when Jesus Christ came to the scene, there was a shaking. And Haggai, as the prophet of God, is about to prophesy about the shaking which is going to happen. Are you with me? Haggai chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. Listen to the verses. Who is saying? Do we need to hear him when he speaks? Huh? You guys look tired. Do you need to hear him when he speaks? Continue. For that sake, the Lord of Uh-huh. Yet once. Yes, once. It is a little while. It is a little while. And I will shake. I will shake. What is it going to shake? I will shake the heavens. I will shake the heavens. And the earth. And the sea. And the dry land. The seven. The seven. And I will shake all nations. I will shake how many nations? How many nations will be shaken? All nations, are we together, young people? Continue reading. And the desire of all nations, of all the nations shall, come. shall come. And I will fill this house with what? Glory. With glory. Save the Lord of hosts. Who is this desire of all nations that shall come? Jesus. Are you with me? Jesus, that is why there's that book called Desire of Ages. It is the desire of all nations. All nations desire him, but when he comes, they reject him. We reject that which we desire. This is the picture that we're given in the Bible, that there will be a shaking when Jesus Christ comes. And you see it as we read on. Read on. Let's read Joel chapter 3, verse 16. Uh -huh. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion. Shall roar out of Zion. And utter his voice from Jerusalem. And utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth shall shake. And the heavens and the earth shall do what? Shake. Shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people. But the Lord will be the hope of his people. There's a trembling in the world, but God is the only hope for his people. Are you with me? Even when there's a trembling. Others is a revelation of God's character, but they still hold on to him. Are you with me? Are you with me? They see their filthiness, but they hold on to God. And the strength of the children of Israel. And the strength of the children of Israel. This is a picture of the shaking that we're given in the Bible. So let's go to the book of Acts. Let's tie these things together. The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Verse 19. Repent. Remember, repent is to do what? To turn and walk back, right? It says, repent ye therefore, continue. And be converted. From the presence of the Lord. Read 20. And he shall send Jesus Christ. And he shall send who? Jesus Christ. Which before was preached unto you. Who has been preached? Who do you hear being preached today? Who is supposed to be preached? Nobody else but who? Jesus Christ. Are you with me? The cause of repentance among us is is that there is a revelation of Jesus and when there is a revelation of Jesus there is something that must happen among his God's people his revelation causes us to do what? repent 
Listen. The testimony of Jesus causes a stir in the church because with the testimony of Jesus is a revelation of our testimony about us. Are you with me? When the Jesus Christ is revealed unto us, we see how inadequate we are compared to him. He is the infinite standard given to the people. Can you reach an infinite standard? The law being uplifted is that you are lifting him who is the very character of Jesus. The testimony of Jesus causes a stare, causes a shaking in the church of God. So, when Jesus Christ came among us, his people, there was a shaking. It causes a stare among us, his people. There was a great shaking even during the time of the Pharisees. Jesus Christ is called the stumbling block. Why? Why is he called the stumbling block? Because the Jews had a different sense of the Messiah. So when the Messiah was revealed, they did what? Rejected who? Him. So he's called the rock of offense, the stumbling block among his people. Listen to what Ellen White says. She says, I asked the meaning of the shaking that I had seen. She had seen that there were God's people that were agonizing, praying and going through all this, confessing and repenting. But there was another group that wasn't doing this. And then she says, I asked the meaning of the shaking that I had seen and was shown that it was caused by the straight testimony called forth by the council. By the what? By the what? Keep that word. By the what? by the counsel of the true witness to the loud the sea and church what causes the shaking what causes the shaking the straight testimony which is given by the true witness the counsel of this true witness by the way he is a true witness what kind of a witness is he true he doesn't lie so he tells you, he knows you from within and out. So when he reveals to us who we are, to the council of the Laodicean church, listen, she says, this will have its effect upon the hearts of the receiver. So when counsel is being given, it will have its effect upon the hearts of the receiver. There are people who are going to receive and others are not going to do what? Receive. Are you with me? So it will have its effects upon the heart of the receiver and it will lead him to exalt the standard. Who is the standard? Who is the standard? You thought your vegetarianism is your standard. You thought you're not watching all these things is your standard. You thought you're dressing up in all this is your standard. The standard is infinite. It is Jesus. Are you with me? Are you with me? Some people have made vegetarianism their religion. They have taken what God has given us as the right hand of the gospel to be the whole gospel. No wonder it's got no effect. No wonder it's Phariseeism. The right hand of the gospel is the right hand of the gospel. The gospel is Jesus. Are you with me? Health reform is the right hand. Dress reform, right hand. All the reforms, their hands. Are you with me? But the whole body is him. So don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. It says, some will not, will not bear the, uh, the straight testimony. They will rise up against us, and this will cause a shaking among us, God's people. I saw that the testimony of the true witness has not, has not been half heeded. She says, I saw that this testimony, that the true witness of the Laodicean is given, has not been half heeded. Not even half heeded. Open Revelation chapter 3. Let's go to the testimony that causes a stay among us, God's people. Let's do the testimony as I'm, ab I'm, I'm about to end. Right, we'll see you some time. Okay, so let's go on. Before we read the straight testimony, 
Harriet, I want you to go to Proverbs chapter 1. Let's read verse 24 to 31, since we still have some time. We're reading all these verses. I'm not saying this coming from my own words. I want you to read the words of who? The words of who? The words of God, the words of life. Are you with me? Proverbs chapter 1, verse 24 to 31, you can read. Because I have called and you did what? Hey, let's be together. And you did what? You refused. Go ahead. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarding. And no man is regarding. Are you with me? The hand of God in Isaiah chapter Isaiah chapter 53 has been revealed unto us, but we're not, we're seeing it as a dry root out of the ground. Are you with me? We like no, like we assume we know that is the revelation of Jesus. No man regarded. Continue. But he has said, I know all my counsel. Remember, it's the counsel. The counsel. The counsel of the true witness has been said at what? At nine. Nothing. And with none of my reproof. None of my reproof. And we're going to read the reproofs. Are you with me? Continue. I also will laugh at your calamities. I will also laugh at your calamities. God is saying, I'm going to laugh at you. Okay. Continue. I will mock when your fear cometh. I will mock when your fear cometh because your fear comes and it's too late. There is no creator in heaven. Continue. When your fear cometh as desolation. As desolation, it is destruction. And the destruction cometh as a whirlwind. As a whirlwind, destroy. When stress and anguish cometh upon me, mm -hmm. then shall they call upon me, mm -hmm. but I will not answer. I will not answer. They shall seek me, me early, but, but they shall not find me. Listen, these, <laughs> listen, listen, LYC is this testimony that I'm sharing with you right now. The destiny of the church hangs on it. You re we'll read the quotation. She says, The destiny of the church hangs on it. Continue. For that they hated knowledge. They hated knowledge. And did not choose the fear of the Lord. Did not choose the fear of the Lord. Of my counsel. None of his counsel. They despise all my reproof. Despise them. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. They will be eating the fruits of their own way and be filled. Because we are naturally consumers, right? Naturally we are consumers. We are consumers of information, consumers of food and all this. But after sin, our natures have turned against us. We consume things that are destructive to us. God says, I am giving you the bread of life who is Jesus for you to consume, but you refuse. Therefore, you will be filled with your own devising and destruction, self-consumption. That's what we are as human beings, we're self-consumptive, destructive. Are you with me, young people? Are you with me, young people? But the things that we consume from ourselves are like a black hole. We are never satisfied. There's only one thing that will satisfy, and that is the bread of life, Jesus. Are you with me? Are you with me? Okay, let's go to the reproof. The straight testimony. Before we read, let me continue reading. It says, I'll read the quotation again. It says, I saw that the testimony of the true witness has not been half heeded. The solemn testimony upon which the destiny of the church hangs has been lightly esteemed. Esau? Esau? Esau's mentality? Lightly esteemed. Ah, right? Okay, if not entirely disregarded, this testimony must work deep repentance. What kind of repentance? Mm -hmm. Deep repentance. All who truly receive it will obey it and be purified. All of them that truly receive will obey it and be purified. Let's read Revelation chapter, chapter 3 verse, verse 14 going down. Uh, I'm, about, I'm about to show you something from the scripture. Continue. Let's read. And, and, the angel of the church. and to the angel of the church in Laodicea, right. write the words of the Amen. The words of the Amen. The faithful and, the the faithful and true witness. The beginning, of God's the beginning of God's creation. That's Jesus. 
He's about to say something, but before he says something, he gives a description of who he is. He says, I am the Amen. I am the beginning of the true creation of God. I am the true witness. So you should understand who is about to speak to you. Continue. I know your works. I know your works. You are neither cold. You are neither cold nor hot. With that you were either cold. I wish you were cold. So because you are lukewarm. But because you are lukewarm. And neither hot. Neither hot. I will spit you out of my mouth. I will spit thee out of my. There's a shaking. There's a spitting out. That God is about to do. I will spit you out of my mouth. You are nauseating to me. We as a church, including the preacher, nauseating to God. God says, I'm about to spit you out. You're neither cold nor hot. You're somehow in between, right? Yeah? You're an in-betweener. You don't know where you belong. Continue. For you say, I am rich. This is what we say. This is what we say. Huh? Love is seen in church, you and me. This is, we say we are rich, right? Uh huh. I have prospered. I prospered. And I need nothing. I need nothing. I just need to bring people into the church. Not realizing that you are wretched. Not realizing that you are wretched. Pitiable. Pitiable. Poor. Poor. Blind. Blind. And naked. Have you ever seen a man walking naked and he doesn't know that he's naked? What would you call that man? Mad. The church has gone mad according to Jesus. Not my word. Says, you, you don't know that you are this. You're wretched, you're miserable, you're poor, you're naked, you're blind. But you don't know. This is what we say. It says we are rich and in grace of God, but you don't know that you are this. Continue. I cancel you. I cancel you. You see, he's a gentleman. Huh? He cancels you. I, I do counseling almost for, for, for a living. Right? I see people. I cancel you. I'm not forcing you. But I'm canceling you. It's up to you to receive. What does he cancel us to do? To buy gold, to buy gold tried in the fire. What is gold? Faith. Faith. Your faith needs to be tried. Are you with me? Faith untried is not faith at all. It is presumption. Are you with me? It says you will be tried. I cancel you. There will be trials. You have to go through the fires. There is destruction. God is preparing his people for the final tasting. But we have to go through the fires. And then you come out as gold tried in the fire. You see, the goldsmith, every time when he was done, he refined the gold, he would get the gold to see if it, it was pure, and then he would line it up to the sun, and then see his reflection right there in the gold. And then he says, it's ready. This is what God wants to do with his church. He wants to produce himself and say, you are ready for me. You're ready for business. But we're not ready for business. Since I cancel thee, this is my counseling to you. Continue. So that you may be rich. So that you may be rich. Mm -hmm. And white garments. And white garments. So that you may clothe your souls. It's, it's faith, righteousness by faith. Are you with me? White garments, his garment, so that you may be clothed. And when you are clothed, what happens? Your nakedness might do, no, 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 do what? Appear. We think we are okay. God says, you're not okay. You are naked. You need to be dressed up in my righteousness. Are you with me? And that righteousness is received by faith. By faith. Continue. And so that you might see because you're blind. Are you with me? He says, I want something to announce. Open your eyes so that you might see. You think you're seeing right now. You haven't seen anything yet. This is, it's a blind generation. Listen, God says, let's read Hosea chapter 12. Hosea chapter 12, verse 8. My friend, you can read Spear. You can read Hosea chapter 12, verse 8 as we come to the end.
12 verse 8. Mm -hmm. And Ephraim said, I am rich. I have found substance. In all my what? Labor. Works. He says, in my works, there is no iniquity. He says, I'm rich in all my labor, the things I do, the, the preaching I do and all this. He says, I'm rich. And Ephraim, his name means a double, double what? Double ash. It's double ash heap. Heaps of ash. Destruction. Ephraim is a picture of us. Half-baked, lukewarm. God says that's a double heap. There's destruction coming. You are actually ashes. God wants us, wants to give us beauty for ashes. Are you with me? Beauty for ashes, an exchange that He wants to do for us. But we are so much. I'm rich. We're moving around like that, right? Says we have found. Let's read one verse and then we close with a quotation. Is that okay? Okay, let's read one verse. Let's go to the book of John, Jesus. Let's read his words. John chapter 9, Harriet. John chapter 9, verse, verse 40 and 41. These are our last verses. I'm going to read a quotation. I'll close. Verse 40. And some of the Pharisees. Some of the Pharisees. Remember, this is the time of a shaking. Jesus is just shaking them up. If you read chapter 8, go back and read chapter 8 and chapter 9 for yourselves. You'll see how the shaking is happening. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Ah, they're asking a question about what? Blindness. They go like, are we blind also? What does that imply? Huh? They think they are not blind. Are you with me? In chapter 8, Jesus Christ has moved into the temple and shaken them and they had seen the flash of divinity. They had seen, they had seen the flash of divinity. <laughs> Let's read the next verse. They ask a question to Jesus. Are we blind also? God says you're blind. They say, oh, are you sure we're blind? Let's read the verse 41. Jesus says what? If you are blind, if you, are blind you, should have no sin. you should have no sin. But now you say, but now you say we see. We see. Therefore, your sin, sin remains. You see, listen, if you are blind, I would have winked at. But because you think you see, because you think you're not blind, your sin remains. You have seen my divinity, but you still reject it. The revelation of God holds the stare among us the Pharisees. Here is, here is what Ellen White says. The time in, in Testimonies of Church, Volume 5, verse, chapter 80, sorry, page 80. He says, the time is not far distant when the test will come to every soul. How many souls? How many souls? He says, the time is not far distant. That means that it's what? It's near, are we together? Listen to this quotation. I wish I could unpack it, but because of time I won't. It says, the mark of the beast will be aged upon us. By the way, the mark of the beast, when it is aged upon us, then there'll be a shaking because that's a test. Are you with me? Are you with me? The mark of the beast, the unity of church and state, coming together, forming the image of the gift. That is the shaking. That's what, that's a test. Because God's people will be tested whether you will be receiving another day of worship and choose to eat. Listen to what she says. says. The mark of the beast will be aged upon us. The test will come to every soul. Those who step by step. What kind of step? Step by step. Yield to worldly demands and conform to worldly customs. Will, find, will not find it hard a matter to yield to the powers that be. Step by step. Yielding to worldly customs. You will not find it hard. To you to the powers that be. Listen, it continues. It says, rather than subject themselves to derusions, insult, or threatened imprisonment and death, they would rather mm, me, no. Being imprisoned, no. It says, the context is between the commandments of God and the commandments of men. That's all. 
the revelation of Christ and our own revelation according to ourselves. It says, this time the gold will be separated from the dross in the church. There's a time. Right now we are all okay. We're all Christians. Oh, brother who? Ah, sister who, right? But there's a time coming when it will be separated. There'll be dross and then there'll be pure gold. There'll be dross and pure gold. There's a separation that needs to happen in the church. Are you with me? It's not my job to separate you guys. It's God's job. And that time is coming. He will set the conditions aright. He will light up the fires and the conditions will be so bad. I mean, it will be just be happening. Are you with me? The separation will happen according to the environment around us. The mark of the beast and all this. Listen, it says, it says, true godliness will be clearly distinct from the appearance and the taint of it. Many a star that we've admired for their brilliancy will go out into darkness. Chaff like a cloud will be borne away by the wind. Every wind of doctrine. Even from places where we see so many rich flows of wheat. But there will be chaff. All who assume, this is, this, is, this is what shudders me. It says, all who assume the ornaments of the sanctuary, but are not clothed with the righteousness of Christ, will appear in the shame of their own nakedness. The ornaments of the sanctuary. Just say, ah, no, we believe this and nothing. You don't know this is all about the righteousness of Jesus. This is all about the righteousness of Jesus. It says, when trees without fruits are cut down, are cumbered to the ground, with, where, where, when multitudes of false brethren, how many? How many? Multitudes of false brothers and sisters. False multitudes. That's what they, the testimony says. Multitudes are distinguished from the true. Then, then the hidden ones will be revealed to view. And with, it says, it says, and then, sorry, and it says, and with Hosanna, they will range from, they will, they will range under the banner of Christ. Those who have been timid and self-distrusting will declare themselves openly to be of Christ and truth. The most weak and hesitant in the church will be as David, willing to do and to dare. The deeper the night for God's people, the more brilliant the stars will be. Satan will solely harass the faithful, but in the name of Christ, they will come off more than conquerors. Then will the church of Christ appear, fair as the moon, clear as the star, terrible as an army of banners, clad in the righteousness of Christ. The church is to enter a final conflict. Fair as the moon, clear as the star, and terrible as the armor of banners, she is to go forth into the world to conquer and to conquer. Listen, it says, to stand in defense of truth and righteousness when the majority forsake us. How many will forsake us? How many will forsake us? Majority. To fight the battles of the Lord when champions of few. This will be our test. At this time, we must gather warmth from the coldness of others and courage from their cowardice, loyalty from their treason. The nations will be on the side of the great rebel who is the devil. Are you with me, young people? Are you with me, young people? There is a separation that will happen and the test will come to every soul. It will not spare you. God doesn't care how old you are. Today you are in, within the hearing of the gospel. You must make up your mind. God needs an army. There's treason that has been committed in the church presenting man's righteousness in place of God's righteousness. That's treason. There are cowards in the church. Some of them are pastors and they're cowards. Out of their coward, the cowardice, let us gain courage. Are you with me, young people? Are you with me, young people? 
be with Jesus as well. I pray that we will decide for Jesus today. Amen.